Good morning. It's Sunday, June 7, and you are worshiping online with us. Dublin Community Church, United Church of Christ. Today we tra pay tribute to Natalie Chard. We thank the Chard family. And today we are paying tribute to Natalie through some of her favorite hymns. Once again, welcome Dublin Community Church online. Good morning, and I add my words of greeting. On this day that we are honoring the memory of Natalie Chard, I wanted to share some words from her daughter, Sally, who describes her mother as very spirited, always giving to her family and her friends and her church. When she had a cause she believed in, she fought to the end to do what was right. She loved and valued both women's ministry and music and so please enjoy these special pieces we have chosen in memory of Natalie Chard. Let us be in an attitude of worship. Our call to worship from Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor.
The Old Testament lesson for today contains the very first words of Genesis, the beginning of the creation story. Listen carefully to these beautiful words as God creates light in the darkness. Our Old Testament lesson is from Genesis 1, verses 1 and 2 and 4a. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. Our epistle lesson from 2 Corinthians contains Paul's final words and final blessing to the people of Corinth. Despite the conflict and unrest they face, Paul appeals to the people to live in peace and love, promising that God will be with them. 2 Corinthians 13 Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Our gospel lesson is from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. These words are in the Bible, and these words can be trusted. Amen. And God saw that the light was good. These are the words we just heard in our Old Testament reading from Genesis. And I find tremendous hope in hearing those words. God was able to create light in the darkest void. In the United Church of Christ, we proclaim that God is still speaking. And for me, that proclamation has never been more evident than in the scripture passages for today. Most of you know that at DCC, we follow the Revised Common Lectionary, which means the scriptures for any given Sunday are pre-assigned. Congregations all over the world who follow the lectionary are hearing the same scriptures that we are hearing on any given Sunday. And it never ceases to amaze me how despite being pre-assigned, more often than not, the scriptures prove to be incredibly timely. God indeed is still speaking. The words that Paul speaks to the people of Corinth in our passage from 2 Corinthians could easily be spoken to us right now. Paul says to the people to put things in order, to agree with one another, to live in peace. And then he assures the people that the God of love and peace will be with them as they strive to make that peace a reality. How on earth, though, do we follow Paul's advice in this day and time? How do we find a way to live together in peace? In light of everything that has transpired over this past week, it is so easy 
to feel overwhelmed and discouraged and at times hopeless. How can God possibly bring light into this dark void? Let me turn to the gospel passage for a moment. In our passage from Matthew, the disciples are on a mountain in Galilee. This is after Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, and Jesus appears to them. The scripture says that the disciples worshipped Jesus, but that some doubted. Despite their doubts, however, Jesus commissions them, telling them to go out into all the world and continue his work baptizing, and teaching, and making disciples of all nations. Let's take a look, however, at the reality and practicality of this commissioning. Here are eleven men on a remote hill in Galilee, experiencing doubts about their purpose, realizing that their leader, Jesus, will no longer physically be with them, and yet it is now up to them to carry Jesus' message into all the world. On the surface and under these circumstances, that task sounds impossible. How could eleven mere mortals carry out such a calling? I can only imagine them feeling overwhelmed with the magnitude of what lay ahead of them, and I can't help but wonder if any of them said to themselves and to each other, This is just too much. It can't be done. Where on earth would we begin? Let's just go home and no one will ever have to know what Jesus said to us. Thank God that's not what the disciples decided to do. We would not be talking about this today if they had not committed themselves to doing what must have looked to them like the impossible. And yet here we are. We are the church 2,000 years later, and God is still speaking. Like the disciples, we too find overwhelming tasks ahead of us. In the face of a worldwide pandemic, economic catastrophe, and systemic racism that threatens to erode the very soul of who we are, living together in peace and harmony can feel at times like an impossible utopian dream. However, I believe with all my heart that hope will get the last word. Just as the disciples, when faced with what looked like the impossible, were able to move forward, spreading Jesus' message of love into all the world, I have to believe that we too can move forward, spreading that same message, one small step at a time, one act of kindness, one effort to educate and understand, one refusal to tolerate that which is intolerable in our society. And like the disciples, we too have the promises of Jesus. Jesus said to the disciples, and he says to us, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion, you watch the ways of all of us and weave out of terrible happenings wonders of goodness and grace. Surround those who have been shaken by tragedy. Surround them with a sense of your present love and hold them in faith. Though we are lost in grief, may we find you and be comforted. Creator God, Be with those who legally protest. Be with those who serve honorably on the front lines. We mourn the lost lives. We call for justice, respect, and change. In the midst of so much in this nation and world, we give thanks for those on the front lines of medicine and daily care, how they watch over the most vulnerable those who are weak. We are grateful for these people who watch over us. For those who serve across the globe in military, for family members who wait and watch with pride and anxiously. For those on the front lines, 
for those who continue to protest peacefully. Watch over all, for these are trying times, times in which we reach out to you. Hear us now as we come to you with our silent prayers. Hear our silent prayers. Creator God, hear us now as we offer to you the prayer taught to us by your Son, our Savior, Christ Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A final blessing on this Trinity Sunday. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.